Okay, 30-2s. Here's the rest of this lesson. Little note. It's little notes. Y axis of the graph, uh, phase shift from the graph of y cosine to the graph of y cosine has been moved to the left or to the right. That's what you're going to be asked to do. Just if it's moving left or right. Might not even need to know that. A phase shift occurs if C is anything but zero. All right. If C is anything but zero. And important note here, <clears throat> for this course, we're not going to need to know the size or direction. We just have to recognize if C is anything but zero, there's going to be a phase shift. All right? Just got to recognize that. Okay, let's look at some parameter D graphs. So again, graph Y equals sine X, Y equals sine X plus 2, and Y equals sine X minus 2, all in the same grid. You're doing your calculators, and you can look up here and see what we get. So here are the graphs of sine x in blue, sine x plus 2 in green, and sine x minus 2 in red. State the amplitude period and f amplitude and period of each of the graphs. Well, they're all the same. All right, they're all the same. Amplitude is one. Period is two pi. Nothing has changed for the amplitude and the period. Part C, in each case, determine the size and direction of the vertical shift from the original graph sine x. All right. So sine x has no vertical shift. The midline value is y equals 0. And the, oh, sorry. The midline value is 0. Vertical shift is none. Midline value is zero, and the equation of the midline is y equals zero. And the d value is zero. For sine of x plus two, there is a vertical shift. Two units up. All right. The midline occurs right here at y equals two. All right, so the midline value is 2, and the equation of that is y equals 2. If you look in the equation of the graph, the equation of the d value is plus 2. All right? The equation of the d value right here is plus 2. And if we look at sine x minus 2, there's been a vertical shift 2 down. The midline value is right here at y equals negative 2. So that's the equation of our line, y equals negative 2, and the d value is right there, minus 2. All right. So how does the midline value of the sinusoidal function compare with the parameter d? Parameter d. Is the midline value. Right. So without graphing, state the equation of the midline for the graph of each sinusoidal function. D is the midline value, so the midline value is positive 10 in part A. Therefore, the equation of the midline is y equals positive 10. D is negative 4, so the equation for the midline is y equals negative 4. And in part C, the value of D is D, so the equation of the midline is y equals D. That's always the case for the equation of the midline. Y equals D. Use a graphing calculator as an aid in completing the following table. So go ahead, get your graphing calculators and complete this table. And then you can restart the video and see what we get. y equals sine x plus 5 means the graph's moved up 5 and it's got an amplitude of 1. So the max value up 5 and up 1 is 6. Min value up 5 and down 1 is 4. The midline value is d, 5. y equals 4 sine x plus 5. So it's a vertical shift 5 up and an amplitude of 4. So the maximum value is 5 up plus 4 is 9. Minimum value is 5 up minus 4 is 1. The midline value is still 5. Part 3, 
amplitude is 2, vertical shift is 5, so we go 5 up, and then 2 above that, maximum of 7. 2 below 5 is a minimum of 3, and the midline value is still the D value of 5. And finally, the last equation, amplitude is 2, move it 5 up, so 5 up and 2 higher for the amplitude is 7, 5 up and 2 down is a minimum of 3, the midline is 5. What do we notice about the midline values? They are the D parameter, and they're all 5 in the table above. Notice that the B value, 1, 3, or 3, do not change the max, min, or vertical shift. And notice that the C value did not change the max, min, or vertical shift. All right. So for the function y equals a sine bx plus c add d, does the midline value depend on the values of a, b, or c? No. Midline value equals D and D only. How can the midline value be determined using only the maximum values of the function? Right? The midline is halfway between the max and min. So characteristics associated with the parameter of C and D. Changing the parameter C on the graph of the function results in a horizontal phase shift. So horizontal phase shift is C. All you have to recognize, if there's a C value, there's going to be a phase shift. If there is no C value, then there is no phase shift. You will not have to determine size or direction. So horizontal phase shift has occurred unless the y-intercept of the graph is on the midline of the graph and it increases to the right from that point. That's only in the graph of sine. Right. Change the parameter D on the graph results in a vertical shift. So the value of D is the midline value of the graph. You can determine the midline value using that equation, max plus min divided by 2, or halfway between the max and the min. If D is greater than 0, the shift is up. If D is less than 0, the shift is down. Very nice. So, characteristics associated so far with A, B, C, and D. We learned a couple days ago, amplitude is the A value. Period is affected by B, but it is not the B value. And this is in radians. In degrees, it would be 360 degrees divided by B. We know the horizontal phase shift occurs if C is anything but zero, and the midline value is D. All right. So, example five, determine the amplitude period and equation of the midline of the graph and graph each of the following sine total functions. Y equals six sine x plus one. So we know the amplitude is six. The B value is one, so the period is 2 pi divided by b, or 1, and no c value, so there is no phase shift. The midline of the graph is d. So the equation of the midline should be y equals 1. Part 2. a is 1, so the amplitude is 1. The b value is 4, therefore the period is 2 pi divided by 4, or pi over 2. And we have a C value that is not zero, so we would say that there is a phase shift or a horizontal shift. But that's all we have to do. Just state that there is one. Don't have to state the direction or the magnitude, just that there is going to have a phase shift occurring. Part three, amplitude is a half. B value is a half, so the period is two pi divided by a half, or four pi. And the D value is 0.5, so that's the equation for the midline. Y equals 0 
in which of the above functions is there a phase shift? We said there's a phase shift right here because C is not 8, so in part 2. Example 6. Consider sine of a function of the form y equals a sine bt plus c add d. Write the equation of the sine of a function with no phase shift. No phase shift. And the following characteristics. Amplitude of 3, so a is 3. Period is 4 pi, so 4 pi would equal 2 pi over b. Or b would equal 1 half. 2 pi divided by 4 pi is a half. Midline equation is y equals 7, so d equals 7. So I know my parameters a, b, and d. So write the equation. y equals a times the sine of b is 1 half t. No c value. There is no phase shift. And the d value, we're told, is 7. So there's our equation. Amplitude is 5. Therefore, a is 5. Period is half radians, so 1 half is equal to 2 pi over b. So 2 pi divided by 2, so our b value should be equal to, what is 2 pi divided by 2? Sorry, 2 pi divided by a half. That's going to be 4 pi. And midline value is negative 2, so d equals negative 2. So let's write the equation of this thing. y would equal a 1 half sine of 4 pi t bt minus d. All right, let's look at example 7. Consider the sine of the function y equals determine the nearest hundredth, the amplitude period, and equation of the midline. Amplitude is A, 5.77. Period. It is 2 pi divided by B, 20.28. So to the nearest hundredth, 2 pi divided by 20.28 is 0 0.31. The equation of the midline is the d value, y equals negative 7.50. All right. How can you use the values and determine the max value and the min value and the range of the function? Well, how do you find the max? It's the d value plus the a value. So d is negative 7.50. We went down 7.5 units, and the amplitude is 5.77. So the maximum value should be negative 1.73 and the min value is shift D and we go down an A value so negative 7.50 and you minus 5.77 so our minimum value would be negative 13.27 and then what's the range of the function range would be minimum value is negative 13.27 which is less than or equal to y, which is less than or equal to our maximum value, negative 1.73. So there's our range, and y is any real number. All right. Finally, example 8. Uh, the maximum in values are integers. The maximum is 1. The minimum is negative 5. Determine the amplitude. Well, from 1 to negative 5 is 6 units, so the amplitude is half of that. 6 divided by 2, or is 3. And the midline value, 3 down from 1, or 3 up from 5, is negative 2. The period of the function, this graph goes from high to high right there. So that looks like the period would be... about 4 pi, if you add that up, or you can say from here to there is 4 pi, and the values for A, B, and D, well I know A is 3, if the period is 4 pi, then my B value is 2 pi over 4 pi, which is a half, 